Hello folks, Mr. Brett from Mr. Brett's Backwoods, and today I'm not doing uh, as much a wild edible video as I am a, re a review. Now, I don't normally do reviews. Normally, you guys have seen my videos. You, you know, basically what I do is I just go out and I show you, show you plant and I'll tell you what its name is. And uh, things like that are a uh, personal decision. Uh, you need to... Uh, need to decide on your own whether or not you're going to rely on that. I'll show you what the plant looks like. I'll give a few uses in the description. But for the most part, I expect folks to do their own research and to never take my word for it. Never take anybody's word for it. Um, but I had chimed in on Bushcrafters and Friends of the World, uh, JC's new channel, and uh, he was talking about seven ways and it was talking about planning your escape route and of course we all know the topos and google earth is out there that's a good source uh, google maps another good source one that i use a lot now my comment was towards something called a soil map and i realized that unless you're involved with agriculture or engineering you don't really know what a, maybe probably don't know what a soil map is well this is a soil map and this one happens to be for Nicholas County in West Virginia, where I live. It's a picture of Long Point, it's a geological feature on our local man-made lake. And I wanted to kind of give a brief overview of how to use this. So if we can get on the table here. Now first off, like any book, you want to look at the table of contents. And we're not going to go too detailed on this. But basically, a soil map is aerial photography. And we'll see if we can get this, get you a good shot of part of it here. Now, I don't know if this is showing up on the camera, but you know how on a topo map you'll see little lines? Those little lines represent the actual topography. Well, this is a stereoscopic 3D image. That if you have the right kind of viewer, you can the mountains actually just stand up off the page. Now I don't have one of those, but these little lines going right in through here and around in here define the soil type. Now, several years ago, the U.S. government flew over the flew over the United States in uh, two airplanes. It's an amazing feat of flying because these guys were taking nearly identical in images. They had to stay within a, in perfect sync, or from the naked eye, it looked like perfect sync. I actually remember seeing them fly over my house when I was growing up. But two cameras take a take a picture from a slightly different angle, just like a regular 3D image. Only this is stereoscopic. Now, inside the little lines, you'll see some letters, some symbols. Uh, this one that I happen to look, be looking at says GPF. So what I do, whatever anyone does, is you go back in here, and you'll see this one right here contains wildlife habitat data. Now, I'm not going to look at the GPF, I just happen to see one here is uh, Buchanan type soils. And there are several types of Buchanan. There's a BUB, a BUC is in Charlie, and a BUD is in Delta. And it's going to tell you what type of crops, agricultural crops, might be found in these areas. And the reason you, the reason you want to see that is because, in a worst case scenario, uh, you might need to negotiate with that farmer or whoever with some food uh, or or some animals or any any other supplies that he might have. Uh, you can rely on the farmers. Uh, I'll tell you what type of hardwood trees, coniferous plants, wild wetland plants, herbal plants. All of this is rated, you know, pretty simple, fair, good, poor, you know, very poor, and excellent. Now, the way this relates to the seven ways out 
is when I'm planning my escape routes if I want to let, watch my travels if there's something I know I need say a, say a wild plant such as uh, juniper which the berries are used to control diabetes again I'm not a doctor I don't even play a doctor on TV I expect you guys to do your own research make your own decision but say you decide to use juniper berries to control your sugar in a worst case scenario you want to use the data in these soil types and in these soil descriptions to give you the best chance at finding those juniper berries along that path and, the, and I use that with my Peterson's Field Guide Wild Edible Plants and my Peterson's Field Guide to plant some medicinal herbs. I don't care how many years of training you've got. I don't care if you've been doing this for 20, 30 years. You need to go in and do the research. As a matter of fact, I, my, my, per, my personal doctor, one of the reasons that I, that I picked him because he has a reputation of going back and going over the, even though he teaches medicine at a, at a major university, he has a reputation of going back and reviewing his guidebooks, his research, his texts before making a diagnosis. And I'd rather, I'd rather have a guy like that who doesn't take chances as somebody who thinks they know it all. Never think they know it all. And I'm on my front porch, so you guys are hearing a little bit of road noise. And that was a Harley. Uh, back to the back to the plants. I just happened to open up to uh, black crowberry. Never used it personally, but the piece of field guide will tell you generally what type of soil it grows in. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you it prefers acid soil. Sometimes it'll prefer you tell you it prefers alkaline. All of that information for the soil is alkaline. Uh, acid, whether it's loam, sandy, clay, it, all of that is found in these soil guides. Now you also have, the soil guide also tells you the percent, average percent slope. For instance, the Buchanan loam, which is the BUB as in Bravo, that we looked at earlier. All of the soil within that BUB marking, all of the terrain, is going to be between three and eight percent slope. So I know that's a wide range, but you know if you're huffing it, that's something that you want to take into consideration. Is the average slope? You're not going to be able to go. You're not, or you're not even going to want to go in and check your map every five minutes every time you top a ridge or come to a crossroads to check the soil conditions or to check the check the terrain you're going to want to know what the average is. And uh, I see that we're getting close on the time, so I'll continue this on part two.